Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at how to set up a home network. In this episode specifically, we're taking a look at how to set up a wireless home network. Now, you've got your router set up in your house, and you may have a desktop computer connected to it through a hard wire, but you also have a notebook here, which is a wireless device. And chances are it's not going to be sitting right next to the router, so you won't be able to connect it in with a wire. If you want to be able to take this wherever you want to go in the house, say the kitchen, the living room, out on the back porch, wherever you may want to go, you'll want to connect this wirelessly so you won't have to worry about dragging a long cable behind you. This also goes for other devices like the iPad or the iPhone or any other device that requires Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. Now there's several different flavors of wireless networking or Wi-Fi out there and the one that provides the best combination of speed and range around the house is 802.11n. 802.11n has hundreds of megabits of transfer capability throughout the house, which is quite fast. Now, if you're willing to put up with a slower speed in order to get a better price on your network gear, you can go down to 802.11g. But if you're planning to move video around the house or anything that requires a lot of data, you really will want to spend the extra money and get an 802.11n network. Now, the one downside of a wireless network is that anybody that wants to hop onto it can theoretically do so because it's wireless, it can actually go out through walls. So out in the parking lot, outside your building, out into the house next door, someone that's just parked on the street, they may be able to gain access to your network and then get up to nefarious activities like downloading movies or sharing their music files, stuff that you basically don't want to have happening over your own personal network. Not only is it potentially illegal, but it also uses up your bandwidth, which means your own performance may be slow. So the way to deal with this is to encrypt your signal using WEP or WPA encryption. Now if you have the choice, go with WPA or WPA2. It's more secure. WEP encryption should only be used as a last resort. For example, if you have an old notebook that only is capable of doing WEP, can't do WPA, then that's when you might want to use that. If you do have the choice between the two, and all of your equipment is capable of WPA or WPA2, go with that because it's more secure. So the trick with encryption is to make sure that you have the data encrypted at both ends. So for example, the router right here receives a bit of information from the internet and wants to send it wirelessly to your house. It'll scramble it up using a bit of a code and then send it out over the wires and your notebook will receive it. It'll apply the code, it knows what the, uh, the password is, it'll decrypt it, read it, and then when you send something back out, It'll scramble it at the notebook end, send it over to your router, which will then descramble it and then send it on its way over the internet. This means that not everyone can peer in on your network unless they actually have the code. And what this is typically is a passphrase or a long series of numbers and letters that are a pass key. So when you set up your router for the very first time, you'll often be asked to set up encryption for the router for the wireless component. So when you do so, make sure that you choose a phrase that you'll be certain to remember. If you're using WPA, this can be set up as an entire sentence using punctuation, capitalization, spaces, and all of that. So again, be sure that you know exactly what it is because you'll need to type it in exactly on both ends to be sure that you're able to decode the traffic going back and forth between the two. Sometimes, unfortunately, the wireless signal won't make it all the way from your computer to your router. You may be too far or there may be things in between the two that uh, will actually cut down the signal. So if you have something like a lot of wood or steel in between the two, or if you have a concrete wall in between the two, it can cut down the signal very sharply. Or your router may be in the basement, but you want to use this on the third floor of your house. And it might just be too much building material in between the two for the signal to get through properly. So sometimes there's cases where the Wi-Fi just won't reach. In an upcoming episode of this series, we'll actually show you power line networking, which is an alternative way to get data from one point to the other in your house that doesn't actually require wireless. For more detailed information on setting up encryption on your wireless router, don't forget to check out butterscotch.com for all of our tutorials on the subject.